Hi folks, what I've got here is a brand new three rail O scale Kansas City Southern 2104 Texas steam locomotive. It's made by Lionel and we're going to check it out today on Eric's Trains. Alright, let's start off with some history. So this is a 2104 type steam locomotive. That means we've got two wheels up front, 10 drive wheels and four wheels on the trailing truck. In Europe, I suppose they would call this a 152 because they count axles rather than wheels. But here in the US with the white system, we count wheels and so we call it a 2104. So 2104 type steam locomotives were referred to as Texas type locomotives in most of the US and up in Canada, they were called Selkirk type locomotives. But the 2104 Texas wheel arrangement originated and was principally used in the US. The first 2104 was Santa Fe number 3829, which was built by Baldwin in 1919. This first 2104 design was based on an expansion of the existing 2102 type locomotive, with an extra two wheels being added to the rear truck. 3829, however, was the only 2104 on the Santa Fe's roster for quite a while as no more of them were initially ordered. The Santa Fe would return to the 2104 design in 1930 with number 5000, named the Madam Queen, but they would have to endure the Great Depression before ordering more, but eventually the Santa Fe ended up with just under 40 2104s in service by 1944. Now, in between 1919, when the first 2104 was built by Baldwin for the Santa Fe, and 1930, when the Santa Fe came back to the 2104 design, the 2104 type was resurrected by Lima Locomotive Works in 1925. The first Lima-built 2104s were delivered to the Texas and Pacific Railway, and it is after that railway that the 2104 finally got its nickname, Texas. Now, of course, as you can see here, I have neither a Santa Fe nor a Texas and Pacific 2104. I've got a Kansas City Southern, and the KCS ended up with 10 Texas-type steam locomotives, which were built by Lima in 1937. All right, now let's talk about this model of the 2104. So Lionel offered this latest rendition of the 2104 in their 2019 Volume 1 catalog, and these were delivered toward the end of that same year, 2019. Now this is actually the second Lionel 2104 that I have in my collection. The other is a Pensy 2104 Texas that I got around 2012 or so, there it is. I've actually already reviewed that engine, it's on my channel right now, and I'll put a link to it in this video. Just like the previous 2104 from 2012, these new 2104s have the cylinder steam smoke effect down here rather than the whistle steam smoke effect. It's a really cool effect and I'll show you it in just a little bit. So in the 2019 Volume 1 catalog, Lionel offered a whopping 13 different 2104s. There's the KCS rendition that you see here, there's Bessemer and Lake Erie, CB&Q, Southern, DMIR, and Rio Grande. They also did three CNO T1s and four Pensy J1As. And with the CNO and the Pensy versions, if you want to, you can order one of those in a weathered condition, which is pretty cool. Stats-wise, the engine and tender have a combined length of 27 and a half inches. The combined weight is 13 pounds, 9 ounces. This engine has 3 pounds of pulling power, which is fantastic. And the minimum required curve needed to operate this engine is 072. On the inside, this model is driven by one large flywheel motor that's mounted right about here. There's a dual fan-driven smoke unit apparatus that provides smoke for the smokestack and the cylinder steam smoke effect. This engine has all LED lighting. And then back in the tender, you've got the electronics for legacy command control, legacy rail sounds, and Bluetooth. Now, when it comes time to operate this engine, you've got a few options. Obviously, the preferred method is going to be to use Lionel's legacy command system, as that will give you access to all of the engine's advanced features and functions. You can also run this engine with Lionel's classic TMCC command system. You can run this engine conventionally with just a transformer and some track, or you can run the engine using Lionel's Lion Chief app on your smartphone or tablet, thanks to the Bluetooth connection. 
Let's talk about some of the standout features on this model. There's loads of add-on detailing everywhere, especially on the boiler. The front of the boiler opens up, which is nice. Below that on the pilot, there's a non-operational scale coupler, which looks great. But if you want to, you can swap that out with a dummy O-gauge coupler that's packaged with the engine when you buy it. And that will allow you to double head the engine if you want to do that. And I might just do that later on in this video. The tender, of course, looks amazing. That War Bonds banner is absolutely stunning. And that banner is the very reason why I ordered this particular model. At either end of the engine, you'll find operating headlights and tail lights, classification lights, marker lights, and lighted number boards. The inside of the cab is very nicely detailed. It is illuminated and it does have a red glow in the firebox when the engine is in operation. And then underneath the firebox, this engine has the variable ash pan glow effect. And the way that works is that when the engine is in operation, there's a red glow under the firebox. And as the engine picks up speed, that red glow becomes more intense. And that brings us to the final standout feature, which is my pick for BFIMO, best feature in my opinion. And of course, that is the cylinder steam smoke effect. It looks incredible. It's still a relatively rare feature on Lionel engines these days. And so I'm really glad they brought it back with this model. Okay, without further ado, let's go ahead and start this thing up. This is the dispatcher. Do you copy? I read you. Over. Start up and get ready to move. Over. Yes, sir. Start up and stand by. Out. Okay, first up, let's check out the whistle. And here's the bell. Here's the sound of water being added to the tender. And here's the cylinder steam sound without smoke. So as I said, this engine does come equipped with the cylinder steam smoke effect. And the way that works is that when activated, smoke will shoot out of two holes on the underside of the cylinders on either side of the engine. Now, the effect will trigger automatically when the engine starts moving. But if you want to trigger it a la carte, so to speak, to show it off to your friends. On the legacy remote, that's done by pressing the AUX3 key here. And by the way, if you don't have this AUX3 key on your legacy remote, it means you're running a very old version of the legacy software and you need to do an update. Anyway, let me go ahead and trigger it and you'll see what it looks like. As I mentioned earlier, the cylinder steam smoke effect on this model does come at the price of having no whistle steam smoke effect. So basically, there's a dual smoke unit just like you would have in a model with the whistle steam smoke effect, but rather than that smoke being routed to the whistle, it's routed to the cylinders instead. Now, some people might complain and say, well, why can't we have both? And I agree, it would be great to have both effects on this model, but the bottom line is that would increase the price of the model because to add the whistle steam smoke effect into this engine, they'd have to modify the tooling and add more parts, which would of course increase the price. And this engine is already expensive the way it is. It's $1,500. I'm sure a lot of people aren't happy about that already. If they had to increase the price of the engine to $1,600 or $1,700, people would be really unhappy about that. So that's why this engine doesn't have both of those smoke effects. And lastly, here's a sampling of some of the crew talk sounds on this model. Dispatcher, my water's full. Am I cleared to the outbound? Over. Roger that. Take the green. Over. This is the dispatcher. You're clear to pull. Over. Roger that. Here we go. Out. Dispatcher, we're ready. Is it okay to pull? Over. Negative. Hold your position. Over. Roger. Standing by. 
We're ready to move it out. Now, I don't have a KCS caboose at the moment. Seems like every time I get another caboose, there's yet another one I don't have in my collection. So for today, I'm gonna use a Union Pacific caboose as a stand-in. Anyway, let's go ahead and roll it out.
right, that about wraps it up for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. This is a fantastic engine and a fantastic model, and I'm really happy to finally have two of these Lionel 2104s in my collection. Now, if you're interested in picking one of these up for yourself, the retail price is right at $1,500, although if you go through a good Lionel dealer, you should be able to get a decent discount off that retail price. And as always, if you're looking for a good Lionel dealer, try my favorite train store, which is Legacy Station. You can find them on the web at www.legacystation.com or give them a call at 770-339-7780. Now, if you'd like to support Eric's trains, I would greatly appreciate it. That can be done through Patreon at www.patreon.com slash Eric's Trains. I'd like to put a big thank you out there to all of my current Patreon supporters. Your support means the world, not only to me, but to the future of this channel. And then finally, if you'd like to buy an Eric's Trains t-shirt or anything else I might be selling, check out the Eric's Trains online store at www.ericstrains.com slash store. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time. That means it's got two wheels up front, eight drive wheels, I mean, I mean, ten drive wheels. <laughs> that means it's got two wheels up front, eight, ah, did it again. This first 2104 design was based on an extension, extension, expansion, ah. The Santa Fe would return to the two, two, uh, lost my spot, lost my spot. All right, now let's talk about the Lionel model that we have here. Lionel offered this latest rendition of the 2104 in their 2019 Volume 1 catalog, and these were delivered toward the end of two, two, yeah, two, toward the end, toward the end. It's got all LED lighting, and then you've got Legacy, uh, shoot, there's a fan-driven smoke unit for the smokestack and the whistles, oops, not the whistle steam smoke effect, oops. <laughs> there's a dual, something or other <laughs> there's a dual fan driven smoke unit the, 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 the. there's a dual fan driven smoke unit that's that, that yeah you can't get that at either end of the engine you'll find operating headlights and tail lights classification lights and marker lights and lighted number boards and did I forget something <laughs> I don't know.